Hi, I'm Hans Larsen, engineering lead on the SDK team. What I'm going to show you is a fully working chess engine running on the internet computer. This is a very simple front end made in JavaScript that starts a new game, and the game happens on the internet computer itself. Every move I do triggers the engine to calculate the next move. You could imagine this being a game against another person on the internet, or multiple people voting for the next move against the chess master. Or this could be an entirely different game, like a card game, or even a lottery system. Since nobody owns the code or the game, nobody can mess with it. In this demo, we're going to show you how to build a chess engine running on the internet computer with Rust. So this is a good example of how you can use another language than Motoko to build canisters and run them on the internet computer as if they were native code. So first, like any cargo projects, we're going to create a new library called Chess. And inside of it, we're going to uh, open up in our favorite editor, editor. This is a standard Rust library. There's no magic here. This is entirely what you get when you create a new uh, library in Rust, we're going to create a new DFX JSON, which is the, the configuration for the DFX uh, CLI tool. For, and we're going to create a new canister of type custom uh, that actually run cargo build in order to create this, uh, the WASM, the WebAssembly output. And we're going to tell TFX where to find that WASM and what is the API of our canister. So the next step would be to create that API because it doesn't exist yet. And so we're going to create the API for our chess canister. And this API takes three methods, creating a new game and telling it whether we want to be the white player or the black player. And it's going to take a move, which takes the move in a UCI notation and returns whether it's a valid move or not. And we're going to have a way to get the fan, the state of the board, uh, which is a query method. That means that it doesn't update the memory. Same in Motoko when you do query methods. Now let's add our dependencies. So because this is a Uh, because this is a uh, Rust canister, we need to add the uh, Internet Computer uh, Canister Development Kit for Rust to our project. And right now, this is not public, but it will be for Tungsten. And the last dependency that we need to tell it is uh, Pleco, which is a chess engine. And we're going to use version 0.5.0 for that. Next. Uh, we're going to remove the default uh, tests and we're going to add the method for creating a new game. So we import everything that the CDK has to give us and we're going to import the board from Pleco. So the new method just creates a new board uh, by calling the storage uh, API that we pro uh, published. This is simply a way for users to use storage. Uh, they can use globals or any kind of heap allocation. Uh, we just make it easy for users to create new objects that will be persistent between calls. Uh, you can see that I specify here that I want this to be an update method. And this will make it public under the name new. It takes a bool and return an optional string. And the optional string is uh, the move that the AI will do. If, if, if I'm the white player, there is no move because I'm the one who's supposed to make the first move. But if I'm a black player, um, the AI will make the first move and will return it to us. So now that we created the new board, uh, we need to have a way to make a move in it. 
So here I uh, export a new function called UCI move, but I rename it to move. This is an update call, so it will change memory. And it gets the same board as created in new, and then it applied the UCI move, which is a function provided by Playco. We don't even use that. So we just reuse existing code. And um, if the move is valid, we return true and the AI move. And if it's not valid yet, we just return false uh, with no move because the AI will not play for you. Finally, we implement the AI move itself. We create a clone of the board and then we apply a searcher on it, which is the AI itself, which is Stuckfish. And, um, and we search for the next best move. We apply it to the board, and then we return its version stringify in UCI. And the last one is how to use the, to get the fen notation, which is we get the same board and we just return the string for the fen notation of the board itself. Now we're going to build this using DFX build, as you would for any projects using DFX. You just run DFX build, and it takes a minute or two, and it will give you the wasm and the did, and it will create canisters for it. And then we can just install those. There is absolutely no difference to the workflow uh, between Motoko and Rust once you've set up the configurations, you just use DFX build, DFX canister install, and DFX canister call like you would a generic Motoko workflow. Once this is compiled, uh, we can just call canister install with our chess canister, and we will see that it installs correctly. I have a replica running in the background. And now I can do dfx canister call chess with new and I'm gonna say that I'm the the white players for now so since I'm white I'm the white player it didn't return any move so my first move should be e2 to e4 and we'll see that the computer returned true because this is a valid move and it returns c7 to c6, which is the move that the computer did. And now if I do uh, d2 to d3, the computer did d, d8 to b6, which is, um, is knight. And I'm just going to do a1 to a2, just to show a1 to a2. And this is not a valid move, so the computer just says, nope, you cannot do that, and nothing happened. The board stayed the same. Finally, I have the getFen the get fen, uh, method, which returns me the current state of the board in fen notation. So if you know how to read that, like you would see how the board would be at this moment. And so as you can see, there's multiple points to this here. One, it, it took me less than five minutes to build a fully functional chess canister uh, that people can use to play chess against an AI. Uh, two, once we, con we set up the configurations, uh, the, uh, using Rust is no different than using Motoko with DFX. Uh, everything is made easier. The three, there is nothing preventing us from using Rust and building anything that can target WebAssembly to build canisters for the internet computer. Uh, Motoko is just one language that's specialized for the internet computer, but we can use Rust or we can use uh, any other languages uh, for this. Any other languages that build to WebAssembly. Everything that is local here can be also built for the internet computer, for um, for the tungsten network and sent over there and nobody can owns it uh, so if you wish to create a canister that nobody owns and play chess against it or play a lottery that nobody can tamper with 
Uh, this is definitely easy to make and would take you a few minutes. You can also see that to communicate with the uh, ROS canister, uh, we use Candid the same we would use for Motoko. So there is absolutely no difference for the client side whether the back end, the canister is coded in Motoko or Rust. Everything uses Candid to communicate with it and it integrates seamlessly with other canisters as well, which know and uh, understands and uses Candid. So you could have a canister that just calls this chess canister from Motoko or from another language that builds to WebAssembly and have those play chess against each other. But we can use Rust or we can use uh, any other languages uh, for this. Thank you.